Have you ever gone to a doctor, stepped on the scale, and been told that your BMI is too high? Maybe you're in great shape, hitting the gym regularly, but according to that little number, you are overweight or even obese. Frustrating, right? Well, you are not alone. A lot of people, including myself, have wondered if BMI is really the best way to measure health. So, is BMI a total myth? And if so, what should we actually be paying attention to? Stick around because we are about to break it all down. Hey guys, this is Dr. Noni from Dr. Noni's Power Lab. I am board certified internal medicine physician specialized in cardiovascular disorder and obesity management. This channel, as you know, is all about pushing limits, optimizing health and achieving peak performance. Whether it's mastering your metabolism, staying sharp or building unstoppable momentum in life. I have got you covered. All right, quick refresher. What is BMI or body mass index? It's just a simple calculation. Weight in kilogram divided by height in meter square. That's it. No fancy tests, no consideration of muscle mass, bone density or body composition. Just your weight relative to your height. Sounds too simple to be accurate, right? Well, that's kind of the problem. BMI was actually developed in the 1830s by a mathematician, not a doctor, named Adolf Kittele. And while it is useful for a broad population studies, it falls apart when applied to the individual. So why BMI gets it wrong? Think about this. Two people can have the same exact BMI. One could be a bodybuilder with 10% body fat, while the other have excess fat with very little muscle. Yet, according to the BMI, they are both labeled the same. Here's where the BMI falls short. Number one, it doesn't differentiate between muscle and fat. That's why so many athletes and fit people get classified as overweight or even obese. Number two, it doesn't consider fat distribution. Carrying fat around your belly is much riskier than having it in your hips or thighs. But BMI treats all weight the same. Number three, it ignores other health factors. You could have a normal BMI but still have high visceral fat, insulin resistance, or other hidden health risks. In fact, a study published in the International Journal of Obesity found that nearly 50% of people classified as overweight by BMI were actually metabolically healthy. Meanwhile, a chunk of people in the normal BMI range had underlying health problems. So BMI is not the gold standard. What is? If you really want to know whether your weight is healthy or not, body fat percentage is the real game changer. Body fat percentage tells you how much of your weight is actually fat versus lean muscle, including muscle, bone, organs, and water. That's the way more useful than just looking at total weight. It differentiate, differentiates between fat and muscle. So if your body fat is low, but you have a high BMI, it just means that you have more muscle, not because you're overweight. Number two, it helps assess real health issues. High visceral fat is linked to heart disease, diabetes, and other serious conditions, even if your BMI is normal. It also gives a better fitness goal. Instead of obsessing over losing weight, you can focus on losing fat while maintaining muscle. A study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that body fat percentage is much stronger predictor of health outcomes than BMI. So if you want a true picture of your health, body fat percentage is the number to watch. So how to measure it then? Unlike BMI, which can be calculated in two seconds, measuring body fat percentage requires a little more effort. Here are the some of the best ways. Number one, bioelectrical impedance scales. Quick, convenient, but can be inaccurate depending on hydration levels. Number two, skin fold calibers used by personal trainers, but accuracy depends on the person doing the test. Number three, DEXA scan, the gold standard, measuring body fat, muscle, and bone density accurately. Number four, pod pod, 
uses air displacement to measure body composition with high accuracy. So if you are serious about tracking your progress, a disc scan or pod pod is worth considering. So if body fat is what really matters, what numbers should we be aiming for? According to the American Council of Exercise, here are the recommended ranges. For men, essential fat 2 to 5%, at least 6 to 13%, fitness 14 to 17%, acceptable 18 to 24%, overweight 25% and above. For women, essential fat 10 to 13%, at least 14 to 20%, Fitness 21 to 24%, acceptable 25 to 31%, while overweight is 32% and above. If you're aiming for optimal health and fitness, stay in the fitness or athlete range is ideal. So, what do you think? Should we ditch BMI? Here's the deal BMI is actually useless. It's fine for broad population studies, but when it comes to the individual health, is outdated and misleading. Instead of fixating on BMI, focus on body fat percentage, muscle mass and visceral fat. Those give you a much clearer picture of your actual health. Here are the key takeaways of this video. BMI is outdated and flawed measurement. It doesn't consider muscle mass, fat distribution or metabolic health. Number two, body fat percentage is a far better indicator of health and fitness. Number three, the best way to measure body fat include DEXA scan, pod pod, and skin fold tests. Number four, aiming for healthy body fat percentage rather than perfect weight is the best approach. Here's my final thoughts. So next time someone tells you that you need to lower your body mass index, remember it's not the full story. Your weight is just a number. Your body composition is what really matters. If you find this helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next video. And let me know in the comments below, have you ever been frustrated by your body mass index? And what's your experience with body fat measurements? Let me know. I'm waiting for your comment. Have a wonderful day. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.